हेलो फ्रेंड्स दिस इज प्रोफेसर ए एस मोची टुडे वी आर डिस्कस ऑन दी कल्चरल मेथड्स और कल्चरल प्रैक्टिसेस ऑफ पेस्ट मैनेजमेंट इन लास्ट लेक्चर वी हैव बीन सीन अबाउट द इंटीग्रेटेड पेस्ट मैनेजमेंट टेक्निक्स इन दैट इंटीग्रेटेड पेस्ट मैनेजमेंट टेक्निक देर आर दी वी कैन सी देर आर दी डिफरेंट मेथड्स एंड टेक्निक्स विच विल बी यूज टू रिड्यूस द पेस्ट पॉपुलेशन बट हाउ इन अ कॉम्पेटेबल मैनर इन दैट देर आर द डिफरेंट टेक्निक्स एंड मेथड्स वी कैन यूज इन इंटीग्रेटेड पेस्ट मैनेजमेंट इन दैट द फर्स्ट वन इज ए कल्चरल मेथड्स ओके देन हेयर दीज आर द डिफरेंट टूल्स और मेथड्स ऑफ द आई पी एम विच विल बी सप्रेस द पेस्ट पॉपुलेशन इन अवर एग्रो इको सिस्टम और इन अवर फील्ड इन दैट कल्चरल मेथड्स फिजिकल मेथड्स मेकेनिकल मेथड्स बायोलॉजिकल मेथड्स लीगल मेथड्स एंड केमिकल मेथड्स दीज आर दी सिक्स डिफरेंट मेजर टेक्निक्स एंड मेथड विच विल बी यूज एज ए कॉम्पेटेबल मैनर टू रिड्यूस द पेस्ट पॉपुलेशन इन इंटीग्रेटेड पेस्ट मैनेजमेंट टूडे वी आर ओनली डिस्कस अबाउट द कल्चरल मेथड्स ऑफ आई पी एम देन द क्वेश्चन इज दैट वॉट इज मीन बाय कल्चरल मेथड्स यर द नेम इट सेल्फ इंडिकेट दैट द कल्चरल मेथड इट मीन्स दैट देर आर द सम ऑफ द रेगुलर फार्म ऑपरेशन विच इज कैरीड आउट और विच इज डूइंग बाय द फार्मर फ्रॉम द एंशियंट पीरियड और फ्रॉम द ट्रेडिशनली हेयर इफ यू सी द रेगुलर फार्म ऑपरेशन और कल्टिवेशन प्रैक्टिस एम्प्लॉयड इन अ मैनर दैट डिस्ट्रॉय द इंसेक्ट्स और प्रिवेंट देम फ्रॉम द इकोनॉमिक इंजुरी एंड द मेन मोटो और द मेन पर्पज ऑफ द कल्चरल मेथड इज दैट द मेन पर्पज ऑफ द कल्चरल मेथड ऑफ द पेस्ट मैनेजमेंट इज दैट मेक द इन्वायरमेंटल लेस फेवरेबल फॉर रिप्रोडक्शन सर्वाइवल एंड द डिस्पर्सल ऑफ द पेस्ट एंड मोर फेवरेबल फॉर इट्स नेचुरल एनी मीज इट मीन दैट हेयर विद द हेल्प ऑफ दिस रेगुलर रेगुलर फार्म ऑपरेशन विच विल मेक द लेस फेवरेबल इन्वायरमेंट टू द पेस्ट पॉपुलेशन एंड विच विल बी हेल्प टू सप्रेस द पेस्ट पॉपुलेशन और टू रिड्यूस द पेस्ट इन्फेस्टेशन इन अवर फील्ड एंड सेकेंड वन इज helps to make the more favorable environment to their natural enemies natural enemies means are those helpful insect that insects uh, which uh, helps to check the pest population in our agro ecosystem or in our field uh, but uh, these are all the regular farm operation uh, we can use in this techniques hence these techniques or these cultural methods is the economically friendly methods of the pest management then let us see one by one which are the different techniques and methods or practices which can followed or used in the cultural uh, methods in that uh, tillage operation crop rotation trap cropping intercropping mix cropping barrier cropping or border cropping field sanitation clean cultivation time of sowing or time of planting water management use of resistant varieties and other cultural methods let us see one by one in that the first one is tillage operation here in that tillage operation uh, this techniques or this practice it is a uh, doing by the farmer from the ancient period in that tillage operation uh, there are the two major techniques or in, uh, techniques include in this uh, practice in that the first one is plowing and second one is hoeing what happen with the help of this plowing and hoeing uh, this plowing and hoeing it is only carried out or doing only in a summer condition in the may month and at that condition the sunlight is very heavy or very very uh, we can say that the very temperature is very high uh, during the summer the deep summer plowing helps to uh, change the soil layer and with the help of this changing the soil layer which are the different life stages or hibernating stages of the insect it may be eggs larva pupa or adult these hibernating stages or diapause stages of the insects which will be exposed to the environment and uh, environment it means that it is exposed to the heavy sunlight and due to the heavy sunlight it will be inactive or uh, during plowing uh, there are the some of the birds is behind the plowing and that birds which is pick up by pick up that hibernating stages and eaten by them this is the simple techniques to reduce the pest population here uh, the some of the examples of the insects uh that uh life stages 
दैट आर लाइफ स्टेजेस विच इज प्रेजेंट इन दिस सॉइल बिहार हेरी कैटरपिलर कटवर्म आर्मी वर्म फ्रूट फ्लाई ग्राम पॉड बोरर प्यूपेट्स इन सॉइल इट मीन्स दैट द प्यूपा ऑफ दिस ऑल पेस्ट प्रेजेंट इन दिस सॉइल्स एंड विद द हेल्प ऑफ दिस प्लॉइंग टेक्निक इट विल बी किल्ड देन एग्ज ऑफ द ग्रास ऑपर्स लार्वी ऑफ द पिंक बॉलवम एंड स्पॉटेड बॉलवम इट हेल्प्स टू बरीड इन साइड दिस सॉइल विद द हेल्प ऑफ दिस हुइंग टेक्निक्स इट मीन्स दैट प्लॉइंग एंड हुइंग हेल्प्स टू सप्रेस और रिड्यूस द पेस्ट इन्फेस्टेशन आफ्टर द कल्टिवेशन आफ्टर द सोइंग देन दिस फीचर्स पिक्चर शोज द हाउ द प्यूपा इट इज एक्सपोज टू द इन्वायरमेंट विद द हेल्प ऑफ दिस प्लॉइंग टेक्निक्स एंड हाउ द बर्ड्स विच इज पिकअप एंड आइटन बाय देम देन नेक्स्ट टेक्निक इज क्रॉप रोटेशन द नेम इट सेल्फ इंडिकेट दैट रोटेट द क्रॉप अल्टरनेट ग्रोइंग ऑफ द क्रॉप बट विच क्रॉप अल्टरनेट ग्रोइंग ऑफ द नॉन हॉस क्रॉप वट इज दिस अल्टरनेटिव ग्रोइंग ऑफ नॉन हॉस क्रॉप हेल्प्स टू ब्रेक द इंसेक्ट लाइफ साइकिल और पेस्ट लाइफ साइकिल वेर एज कंटिन्यूस ग्रोइंग ऑफ द सेम और सेम फैमिली क्रॉप इट इज मीन बाय मोनोकल्चर इट सेम लैंड विच विल बी इंक्रीज इन द पेस्ट पॉपुलेशन इट मीन दैट सिंपली वट इज दैट टू अवॉइड द मोनोकल्चरिंग टू अवॉइड द सेम क्रॉप और अवॉइड द ग्रोइंग ऑफ द सेम क्रॉप इन द सेम लैंड इन द सेम एरिया because due to the monoculturing it is helps to chance to increase the pest population in that particular area and uh, to reduce or to avoid this problem which will be go for the crop rotation technique but in that crop rotation technique we can grow the uh, alternate grow of the non host crop uh, this uh, growing of the crop rotation or uh, non host crop it uh, helps to break the life cycle of the insect and reduce the pest population but there is a one disadvantages of this crop rotation is that this technique only it is effective against those pests have a narrow host range in case of wide host range there is this technique is not very effective because what happen uh, depending upon the pest habit the pest is categorized into three category monophagous oligophagous and polyphagous monophagous and oligophagous pests have a narrow host range okay and with against this monophagous and oligophagous pests the crop rotation technique it will be very effective but in case of wide host range in case of polyphagous pests this technique it is not very effective because they have a number of host uh, these are the some of the examples of the crop rotation here uh, Uh, here picture we can see uh, the, the, there is one a classical example here the maize cotton and cowpea the maize it is a cereal crop cotton it is a fiber crop and cowpea it is a leguminous crop it means that it is all the non host crop of that successive cropping uh, this technique it is helps to reduce the pest population in that particular season or in that particular uh, next crop then next technique is that trap cropping the name itself indicate that trapping trapping means the the crop which will be helps to attract the pest population what happen here growing of susceptible crop around the main crops to attract the insect pest population it will it will it means that uh, there are the some of this susceptible crop which will be grow around the main field around the main crop which helps to attract the pest population of the main crop okay here in this picture we can see the marigold as a trap crop in tomato to attract the fruit borer it means that the fruit fruit borer it is the pest of both crop tomato as well as here marigold but here the marigold is most susceptible crop to fruit borer uh, as compared to the tomato hence here the marigold is used as a trap crop in the tomato then next one here uh, the castor is used as a trap crop around the cotton due to attract to attract the leaf eating caterpillar here the leaf eating caterpillar it means that this podoptera lutura and this podoptera lutura it is uh, polyphagous pest and here the cotton and castor are the both major host of this uh, podoptera lutura or leaf eating caterpillar but here if you grow the castor around the cotton crop the castor is most susceptible host of leaf eating caterpillar as compared to the cotton hence we can use castor use as a trap crop in cotton against the sporoptera lutura and these are also the some of the examples of the trap cropping 
here uh, this table shows some of the trap crops you can use against the some of the particular pest in that particular crop okay mm, then next one is the intercropping uh, what is intercropping Growing up more than one crop in same field helps to divide the pest population, which minimizes the losses caused by the pest. What is intercropping? Intercropping means we can grow the one additional crop with main crop to help divide the pest population, or which will help to reduce the pest population or suppress the pest population or reduce the pest infestation. Now, for example, lab lab or cowpea is recommended intercropping in sorghum to avoid the stem borer infestation or Kumbu or Bajra in groundnut again the leaf miner or alpha alpha in cotton as an intercrop helps to reduce the pest infestation. These are the some of the recommended intercropping against the that particular pest in that particular crop. In this picture, you can see here the cotton and maize. Here the maize is also helps to make the uh, make the environment favorable for their natural enemies of the cotton pest. Uh, then uh, next picture shows the uh, intercropping uh, cotton plus green gram. Cotton is a fiber crop and green gram is a leguminous crop. It will also help to divide the pest population and reduce the different sucking pest population in this intercropping. Then but the some of the limitations of the intercropping. The crop intensification in both time and space dimensions is one of the most important limitations of the intercropping. Then the two crops should not have same host or same pest problems like tomatoes and okra are affected by the same fruit borer then nutrient need of two crop should not be same or they should extract nutrient from the different layers of the soil it means that the root types of that two crop which will be grow in intercropping that root type should have a different or should be different should not be same root type to reduce the nutrient uh, competition then if one crop is tuber other crop should be fruit bearing this is the another techniques uh, we can use in intercropping better to have a row of crops which act as a paste repellent like a garlic marigold and onion then next is mixed cropping uh, the mixed cropping the motto or the objective or the purpose of the mixed cropping is same as like uh, intercropping what happened here but what is the difference between the intercropping and mixed cropping in intercrop there is a we can grow only one crop addition, additional one crop with a main crop but here growing of the more than two crops in the same field which will be helps to divide the pest population and reduce the losses caused by the pest attack then next is the barrier crops or also called as a border crop here the barrier crop consists or can consist of relatively tall species that is planted around the perimeter of the primary crop uh, it means that the name itself indicates that it act as a barrier for what purpose here uh, here the different grasses like example sorghum johnson grass corn and elephant grass this is a tall grasses which will be grow around the main field or around the main crops or around the perimeter of the primary crop it will be act as a barrier for that particular pest or to uh, we can say that to avoid the vector of that particular pest now the main motto or objective of the barrier crop is that has been successful for vector management with a non persistent aphid transmitted virus as aphids lost their e infectivity few minutes after the acquisition it means that the barrier cropping helps to reduce the uh, we can say spread of virus which will be spread by the insect vector then next is the field sanitation or clean, clean cultivation the name itself indicate that this technique is very uh, anciently used or traditionally used by the farmer or doing by the farmer in their farm what happened in field sanitation it means that removal and destruction of old plant debris or crop residues or undesirable plants or clean and burn the field burns around the increasing the pest population it means that what happened here after harvesting of the previous crop the field it should be clean but how clean removal and destruction of old plant debris removal and destruction of undesirable plant and burning the our field burns these are the some of the techniques we can use in the field sanitation then here these are the some of the example which will be helps to uh, reduce the pest population with the help of this clean cultivation techniques let us see one by one here this is the first technique removal and destruction of crop residue or volunteer plants or nearby the host plant 
here this is the strawberry field what happened here the worker uh, it is engaged uh, or doing the uh, operation like a collection and destruction of uh, plant debris or fallen plant parts because here in that fallen plant parts there are the some of the hibernating stages of the pest is there and with the help of this removal and destruction of fallen plant parts it will be helps to reduce the pest population then uh, this technique is called as a trimming the field burns this trimming the field burn it is a very effective against the to reduce the infestation of the grasshoppers especially in a rice field uh, around the field burns or uh, around the burns of the rice field here the grasshopper population is more the grasshopper is the major pest of the rice with the help of the trimming technique which will be reduce the egg laying or which will be uh, destroy the eggs of the grasshopper then uh, these are the some of the weeds like a good well was an well and sand well and these all three types of weeds it is act as a alternate host for a larvae of the fruit sucking moth and the adult of the fruit sucking moth it is the major pest of uh, citrus orchard and pomegranate orchard to reduce the infestation of the fruit citrus fruit sucking moth in the that orchard uh, uh, the, here the removal and destruction of the good well sand well and wasan well this practice helps to reduce the pest population in that orchard then uh, this is the bawachi weed this weed is also act as an alternate host for the lemon butterfly larvae and the lemon butterfly it is also the major pest of the citrus orchard then uh, this is the lagasca mollis this is also the one of the weed and this weed it is the most common alternate host for the helicorpa armigera and helicorpa armigera it is the major polyphagous pest in the uh, different crops the next technique is the time of sowing or time of planting what happen here by adjusting the time of sowing or planting the infestation by the some insect pests can be prevented uh, for example early sowing in kharif hybrid sorghum to escape from the attack of the shoot fly and midge fly then early planting of the uh, suru sugar cane to avoid the attack of the early shoot borer then a uh, late transplanted rice crop is severely affected by gall midge while early sown one escape the infestation it means that the time of sowing or time of planting is also escape the plant population in that particular crop against the pest and then here are the use of resistant varieties there are the number of resistant variety which will be or which have been uh, already developed in that particular crop against the particular pest uh, so why we call it as a resistant variety of that particular plant variety because resistant variety having a some of the morphological or biochemical or some of the characters that character which will be helps to restrict the pest population so which are the different characteristics which is present in the uh, resistant cultivar or resistant varieties the hairiness or thickness of epidermis bark of plant hardness of the husk rind of the fruits vigors early maturity are some of the characteristics that are known to contribute the resistant to the certain crop variety but uh, if you compare this resistant variety again this susceptible and tolerant variety what is that what is the main the uh, actual role of the resistant variety in the pest management here in this picture we can see the first picture is resistant varieties that have a pest population but it is restrict to the their development uh, then next is susceptible variety it is very susceptible to the that uh, pest population and reduce the losses sorry increase the losses then a uh, tolerant variety is that that variety that have a pest population but have a inability to produce the more yield or produce the yield as uh, uh, produce the yield while the insect pest population and then if you see the definition of this all three types of varieties the first one is the plant varieties that have a resistance that highly restrict the growth and development of the specified pest or pathogens under heavy pest pressure when compared to the susceptible varieties and then if you see the susceptible varieties susceptibility is the inability of plant variety to restrict the growth and development of the specified pest then what is tolerant variety tolerance is a plant ability to grow and produce an acceptable yield despite a pest attack and then uh, these are just some of the examples of the resistant varieties uh, that is developed in that particular crop against that particular crop in that the second if you see the second point 
the desi cotton variety is much more resistant than the american cotton variety is against the jessids white fly and the spotted bollworm then maldadi is also one of the resistant variety of the sorghum against the sorghum shoot fly pusa purpur cluster and pusa sambrat are the resistant varieties of the brinjal against the brinjal shoot and fruit borer pusa jwala is the white fly resistant varieties of the chili parvani kranti is also the white fly resistant varieties of the okra and the arka surjamukhi is the resistant variety of the pumpkins against the fruit fly and now this is the last point of the cultural methods that is the other cultural practices uh, other than these major practices in that cultural methods also there are the some of the minor practices that will be helps to suppress the pest population with the help of this regular farm operation operation uh, if you see the third point use a high seed rate in a sorghum against shoot fly uh, it means that how we can reduce the pest attack with the help of this high seed rate in sorghum if the sorghum seed rate for sowing is 12 kg per hectare uh, which will be increased by 2 to 3 kg it helps to uh, reduce the yield losses against the shoot fly then if you see the uh, point number 6 uh, draining the rice field to eliminate the case worm it means that the case worm it is the major pest and with the help of the draining the rice fields it is helps to eliminate that pest population then at the time of sowing use a pest free seed material such as tubers cutting sets helps to avoid the attack of the potato tuber moth in potato then termites and scale insect in sugar canes and sweet potato in, in sweet uh, sweet potato we will in a sweet potato it means that uh, the uh, planting material or the seed material it should be pest free let us see one by one uh, this is the first technique that is a raking of soil or raking soil around the tree trunk or around that uh, plant what happen here uh, in case of bear the bear fruit fly pupates in soil but around the that tree trunk in case of mango the mango fruit fly is also pupate in soil but around the trunk so a raking of soil around the tree trunk helps to destroy the pupa of the fruit fly which will be pupate around that tree trunk this is the simple techniques then next one is early earthing up in sugar cane or also in uh, followed in case of potato in case of sugar cane the early early earthing up earthing up it means that only just uh, support the plant with the help of this soil uh, in case of sugar cane it helps to reduce the early shoot borer infestation in case of potato it helps to reduce the infestation of potato tuber moth these are the major pest of that particular crop and then next technique is clipping the tips of rice seedling why we clip the rice seedling during the transplanting before transplanting the rice uh, seedling which will be grow in a rice nursery then after the attaining the growth the seedling should be transplanted into the main field but uh, during nursery uh, growing the there is one major pest of the rice that is the stem borer the egg laying of the stem borer it is takes place at the tips of the rice seedling then uh, at the, during transplanting or uh, at the time of transplanting if you cut the tips of the seedling it will be helps to reduce the egg masses or to destroy the egg masses of the stem borer and reduce the pest population in the main rice field hence we can clip the tips of the rice seedling then next technique is flooding uh, flooding it means that the we can use a uh, forcefully water or we can use a stagnant water this flooding it it will be helps that flooding techniques in particular field create the anaerobic condition for the soil pest and soil pest it is uh, indirectly or directly uh, kill or it will be reduce which are different soil pest white grub termites armyworm and cutworms are the different soil pest it will be reduce the uh, infestation of this pest with the help of this flooding technique uh, then detrashing the detrashing this technique mainly followed in case of uh, sugar cane to reduce the infestation of the different sucking pest like a sugar cane oleophyd scales and white fly infestation next one is the balanced nutrition in case of balanced nutrition uh, it means that it is a judicious application of the fertilizers if you use the more nitrogen of fertilizer it will be helps to chance to increase the sucking pest population in that particular problem but against if you use more potassium fertilizer 
that will be helps or to induce the resistance in the crop against the different pests in that particular crop it means that the balance of nutrition or the judicious application of the fertilizer is must and then next one is a uh, alay formation or alay cropping here we can form a 60 cm wide uh, for every 2 meter planting form a different alay this alay forming or alay cropping in rice it will be helps to reduce the brown plant hopper infestation in a rice then uh, this is the last uh, cultural practice uh, that is the bird perchers the bird it is the mostly carnivorous uh, uh, animals that will be helps to uh, check the caterpillar population in our field this technique is we can use in a different uh, crops so what happen here just we can uh, buried or uh, we can use or buried the different sticks uh, into the soils and this uh, sticks it should be uh, uh, we can say that the 2 meter height above the that crop level what happen uh, on that bird purchase the insect it should be seed uh, it will be seed on that bird purchase and uh, pick up the different larva instead of the larva which is present in our main crop and it will help to reduce the pest population or reduce the Based, uh, yield losses in that particular crop and then these are all the different major and other cultural practices which will be helps to reduce the pay or which will be suppress the pest population in our main field or in our agro ecosystem but uh, these are the some of the advantages and disadvantages of this uh, paste sorry of this cultural methods in that uh, advantages this method is economically better it means that there is no need of the extra cost then it is environmentally safe because here there is no use of the chemicals so it is environmentally safe no harmful effect on the natural enemies of the pests uh, I, have, I have already told you uh, the purpose of the cultural method is that to make the more favorable environment to the uh, natural enemies of that particular pest so it will be no harmful effect on the natural enemies then it will uh, it gives a less chance to development of the insect resistance because there is no chemical there is no insect resistance so this practice or this cultural practice it is helps to reduce the insect resistance then uh, these are some of the disadvantages in the require long term planning it is one of the most uh, important disadvantages timing decide success uh, it means that the practice all the cultural practice it should be on time it should be in a proper time for example in case of sorghum the early sowing it is a very uh, proper technique or it is very effective technique to reduce the attack of the shoot fly if you go for the late sowing the infestation of the shoot fly in that sorghum crop it will be uh, helps to chance to increase the pest population and it will be reduce the uh, yield in a uh, very heavy so timing decide success then knowledge of ecology and biology of the pest is essential ecology means which are the different biotic and biotic factor which is um, make the environment favorable for the pest population should be known or the farmer also should know about the biology of the pest biology means the life cycle of that particular pest in that life cycle of that particular pest the farmer should know about the uh, egg larva pupa and adult stage of that particular pest what is the egg laying habit of this pest how the caterpillar is feeding then how they pupate when they pupate and how the uh, adult uh, habit of the adult of that particular pest this ecology and biology it will be helps to reduce the pest infestation in our agro ecosystem or in our uh, field okay these are all about the different cultural practices which will be helps to suppress the pest population with the help of different uh, farm or different regular operation which will be carried out in our field okay thank you stay home stay safe